Welcome back, everyone. Let's get back to the conversation. I'm now being joined by two lawyers who perhaps do not agree on the decision of the federal government over the suspension of Twitter in Nigeria and what this means for the civic space in the country. Mr. Daniel Buwala is a lawyer and a member of the Lincoln's Inn. He's, uh, he joins us from London, is uh, a, an APC member. And uh, Mr. Anthony Heilebo is also a lawyer and a member of the PDP. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Let me begin the conversation with Mr. Buwala. What can you tell us or what justifies the decision of the government in suspending Twitter in Nigeria? Well, thank you for having me and good evening to your viewers. Let's give a context to this uh, issue. Twitter deleted uh, the tweet of the president of Nigeria and Twitter's attention was drawn to multiple tweets on Twitter that are capable of destroying the country because they were tweets that were inciting violence and Twitter responded by saying that they reviewed it and they did not find that those tweets violated their rule. So clearly by that indication, Twitter expressed and demonstrated bias. Hence, the government of Nigeria decided that Twitter must respond to the take down request or Twitter will be suspended. Twitter never honored the request of Nigeria and they got suspended. The steps taken by Nigeria, is it right? Yes. Is it lawful? Yes. And these are the proofs. In 2011, after the wake of riot in London here, that broke out and people were destroying shops, stealing and looting, and it grew from Peckham to Lewisham to, uh, you know, uh, Hackney to Walthamstow. And before you know it, it now had a copycat effect in Manchester, in Birmingham. At that time, David Cameron, the prime minister then, told Twitter that if they do not respond to the request by the United Kingdom to take out and delete certain accounts and posts, that he was going to shut down Twitter. Twitter obeyed, and that is why they were eventually not shut down. In France, after the anti-Semitist uh, uh, anti or Semitist uh, comment and racial uh, tweets, by unidentified individuals on Twitter. The government of France asked that Twitter took down, should take down the account and the post. And the government and, and Twitter responded in some, and refused to respond in others. The Association of Jewish Students went to court and got an order from the courts in France mandating Twitter to release the PII, that is personal identifiable information about those who hide under a pseudonym. Guess what the Twitter gave as their defense? That Twitter was, did not have an office in France and they didn't have employees. Therefore, the issue of jurisdiction will not have effect on them. That tells you why they refuse to establish office in Nigeria to avoid strict liability. In uh, India, Twitter tolerated a tweet by a separatist leader that was creating confusion and trouble in India. And the government of India asked Twitter specifically to take down certain ports and accounts failure upon which they were going to ban Twitter. Twitter obeyed some and left some, and they decided to suspend Twitter. There is no, in, in America, after the 2016 election that brought Donald Trump, the Democrat-led Congress, when they saw that data analytics by Oxford released how social media owners we are manipulating algorithms and shaping public per uh, perception, influencing election, they conducted investigation hearing. We are the emphatically one Facebook and Twitter, uh, Google, and other owners of the tech to stop the manipulation and turn down certain tweets that are offensive. Otherwise, they were going to be banned. Twitter obeyed. In the case of Nigeria, when the request was made to Twitter, Twitter, in fact, made a derogatory statement that I read. This were their response to the request. They say, at Muhammad Ubuari, we don't know who you are or the country you lead. We come across a tweet that offend our rules and we decided to take it down. And I said to myself, if you do not know as a company, a country that has more than 30 million subscribers and the president of that country, is that you're the dumbest person on earth or you're an agent of foreign forces trying to destabilize Nigeria? You see, shown in the case of Twitter, Jack Dorsey demonstrated that he is a person of interest. He participated in the NSAS protest sometime in October last year. By retweeting a tweet that was made 
of means to generate funds to run protests. He is not a Nigerian, does not have business interests in Nigeria, has no basis to take part in any protest in Nigeria. But the same diagnosis, in the case of America, he classified the protesters of January 6th as insurrectionists. So this double standard that is being uh, brought to the developing countries needs to be checked with facts. So even the statement by the European Union, by America, Canada, and the race must be seen within, within the light of facts and against evidence. We agree that social media platform can advance democracy. We agree it can boost our trade. We agree it will shape public engagement. But where we have a point of departure is that the same request they made to Twitter when it was threatening their country, Nigeria made similar requests. And until Twitter abides by that, Nigeria will keep Twitter under suspension. All right. It is convenient for them to talk about free speech now because their countries are not in problem. But when their countries were in problem, they demanded that and Twitter obeyed. Let me allow Mr. Ahilebo to respond to you. He's a member of the PDP, and I know his party, and some Nigerians are not happy. Uh, how do you respond to Mr. Buala, Mr. Ahilebo? Okay, so first of all, uh, I'll remind Mr. Buala that this is one of those people that uh, uh, deprived uh, Governor Baseki from contesting, and, and we see the outcome of the, of the Supreme Court judgment as to his decision where, when he took that decision. So we must be careful the kind of facts he spews out because from, for me, somebody that can come on air and say the United Kingdom sought to suspend Twitter, where I have lived, where I went to school, where I was called, where I actually got my law degree at the University of Buckingham, not, such an action will never take place in the United Kingdom. So we cannot use that as an excuse for a regime that we know the head of this regime as far back as 1983 he promulgated the Decree 4 to try and restrict the free speech of Nigerians. And since this regime came into power, it has sought ev at every point to restrict the freedom of speech of Nigerians. They started with the note to social media bill acronym that we started, and we protested. They, luckily, at the time, we had a Senate president in the person of uh, Bukola Saraki that listened to the cries of the people and, and felt that this stifling free speech was something that he would never be a party to. And that was how we quelled that. Now, for him to say that the Nigerian government made a request, that was not what happened. It wasn't, it wasn't Jack Dorsey or Twitter itself that decided to take down the, the tweet of Mr. It was people that reported the vile and malicious tweet from the handle of the president. And if you notice, it was only the specific tweet that, re that referred to the civil war. And if Mr. Mr. Boala has taken his time to read the Twitter community rules, and also said that to the DG of the NOA, if he has taken his time to read the Twitter rules, it is specific that it, Twitter will not tolerate when people refer to Holocaust, or it was very, very specific in, those, in, in its rules, that we will not tolerate anybody making reference to any, any occasion where people were mass murdered. People were killed in their numbers. And this is just a, coming a day after the, memor the memorial of uh, those that lost their lives in the civil war. Such a touchy subject. Nigerians were incensed that how can their own government handle, in the handle of the president, tweet such a thing. Now, for someone to go and say, uh, or come to the public space and say to me, or to any other person listening, that it is within the right of the government to stifle the speech of Nigerians and also refer to governments that have spoken up against five, five known embassies have come together. It, it has never happened in Nigeria in the recent time that five of them will come together and issue a statement, a joint statement, that Nigeria should be aware that we are also signatories to uh, um, um, uh, international, international treaties that allow for the freedom of people both offline and online. Now, you, you, when you say the Nigerian government made a request for Twitter to take down a post, no, I, I don't think that if... Peter reviews anybody's post, any of us will support that. That anybody is making an insightful comment that would lead to breakdown of anarchy, chaos in the country, we would support whatever it was. And that was why Nigerians en masse reported the tweet. It wasn't, it wasn't um, I, I think we should be clear, it wasn't the action of Twitter independently. It was the report that it got from a lot of Nigerian handles, a lot of international handles, that this tweet violates your own community rules. Please take it down. And as such, I think that what um, 
And I'll always go back to the DG of NOA because he spoke before me. That is the person responsible for making Nigerians aware or educating Nigerians on what they need to do. If the Nigerian government indeed felt that some, some characters were making, or post, making posts on Twitter that violated some of its in-country rules, perhaps what they should have done was to solicit the help of Nigerians to report those particular accounts. But I didn't see anywhere where the Minister of Information in the person of Mr. Lai Mohammed made any solicitation to Nigerians that we should report massively an account that is fomenting trouble for the country. Instead, what they did was to, without even thinking of the economy, you have outlined the economic importance of Twitter to Nigerians. A lot of Nigerians have been, have been thrown off their jobs. A lot of Nigerians do not have any, anything to do other than social media because the real sector has been totally destroyed by insecurity. I had to close a farm that was producing 200 crates of egg two weeks ago because of insecurity. I could not afford to go and start paying ransom for my workers or anybody on that farm. And so therefore, if I was somebody that was heavily invested in social media communication, that means my second source of livelihood has been destroyed by the Nigerian government. What are they telling me to do? That the next thing available is to look for the next alternative source of, which may not even be legal. So it, we, sh we should be very considerate when we make or do certain things or policies that will affect the common the common man on the street. Because this action by the Nigerian government has shown that it has no care. It does not take the Nigerian people into consideration before making any of its policies. By the way, and if I may ask, under what law, under what law does this government purport to suspend or ask Nigerians not to tweet? Under what law? Section, section 30, 38, 36.8 of the Constitution does not provide, I know you asked that question to, to, to the DG of NOA. Then he asked him that under what law is it that the attorney general would say that anybody that tweets no. will, and none of them have been able to answer it. When you ask them, they'll tell you, they'll see you in court, they will bring, they will bring journalists, threatening Nigerians. Since when have Nigerians lost the ability for them to challenge the government, for them to hold government accountable? While the DG NOA was speaking, do you know I went to the website of NOA to try and find out what the budget of NOA? Lo and behold, there was nothing on the website, there was nothing that spoke to the issues. These are people who should All use right. this media to Ilamo. educate Nigeria. Yeah. Over the last couple of weeks, shall, right. shall over the last couple of weeks, we have made concerted efforts using Twitter's new two court spaces to engage Nigerians and say, let us douse the tension or around the country. A lot of people are tense. A lot of people have been out of work. A lot of people have lost their jobs. COVID brought its own problems. With Twitter, we were able to... Two, two, three weeks ago, a young lady by the name of Inu Umore applied for a job and went for the job and went missing. Her friend raised their alarm that she was missing. And with the help of people, not the Nigerian police, who were able to find out this particular individual uh, that had uh, asked Anthony, to come for that. Anthony, let me allow that to come in. Today. Yeah. Just a moment. Let me allow, because we need to allow, give a uh, balance of timing to, for this conversation. Uh, let me allow, Miss, because I see that he wanted to respond before I throw in a, a, another question for us to, to look at. Because the legal implication is the reason for this segment of the uh, of uh, the, uh, the program. So, Mr. Boal, let me allow you about a minute to respond to Mr. Uh, Ehilebo. Okay. okay. Uh, let me respond by saying these facts. That uh, I, I think, just like you rightly guided, that we are here to discuss law, not personal issues. The fact that he has lived in England, has studied in England, is immaterial. He is not entitled to his facts. I have also studied my postgraduate degree here in England. I did transfer to the bar. I'm even speaking from England. But what matters is research, industry. What is the position of the law? And this is a fact I'm saying that can be verified. In 2011, David Cameron threatened to shut down Twitter. Twitter had to comply. Israel threatened to shut down Twitter. Twitter had to comply. Turkey, France, Germany. In fact, in uh, one of these African countries, they even shut down Twitter, conducted election before they came back to the social media. Now, here is the position of the law. Twitter is not a registered company in Nigeria. Twitter is not a Nigerian company. Twitter is not a foreign company registered in Nigeria. Therefore, Twitter in Nigeria does not have a legal personality. Twitter cannot assert right and stick for the dress within the territory of Nigeria. A Nigerian citizen cannot secure a remedy against the government of Nigeria because he cannot access Twitter. His contract is with Twitter. Whatever he, lost, he loses, he can get it under the agreement he has had with Twitter. Now, what is very clear is that the Nigerian government cannot prosecute a Nigerian for using Twitter because the law of the land says that nobody can be tried or convicted for an offense that is not defined by law 
for which the punishment is prescribed in a written legislation. That area, there is no further discussion on that. But as to the right of Nigeria to suspend Twitter pending compliance, it is lawful, it is legal, it is moral, and I have cited example of the holier-than-thou nation to you. When they were in their crisis moment, they called Twitter to order. But now it is convenient for them because they do not have a crisis. We in Nigeria are faced up with existential crisis. And therefore, the government cannot sit and watch Twitter, especially not social media platform. I'm talking about Twitter in particular, whose founder has indicated a clear case of interest in Nigeria. Right. I am even advising the federal government to proceed further and lodge a complaint in the United Nations, I mean, United States Congress, to call Twitter to explain the particular interest he has in Nigeria, whether to destabilize Nigeria or whether he's so, acting so, as an so, agent. Well, well, Mr. Mr. Let me, Mr. Bola, let me quickly bring in Mr. Ehilebo. But I'd like to ask you this question, Mr. Ehilebo, because if you look at what happened in the United States, when the former president, Donald Trump, uh, is someone who is very engaged so much on Twitter, and we saw a situation where there were warnings to him on his engagement and some of the messages he sent out. Uh, didn't, did Twitter warn the president if there is any, did it, did considering it? that he's a president? And apart from that, why it does look like after there was a protest from the government, from what I understand, there was, uh, the, the, Twitter deleted tweets from uh, Inam De Kano. What do you have to say to this? Now, now, now Sheung, it's interesting that my brother there would, would make allusions to things that never happened. And he's saying that Jack Dorsey endorsed. Has he forgotten that the wife of the president of the United States carried a placard and said, bring back our girls? What are we going to do to her? Are we going to go and tell her that she doesn't have a right to express herself? These are the kind of people that we have around government who advise government and tell government that they can recriminate people and tell people that they should not express themselves. Please, Sheung. Let me say this for all intents and purposes. The president, the most powerful man in the world, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, had his tweets deleted while he was campaigning for an election. What happened? Did he shut down Twitter? He didn't shut down Twitter. He has even been permanently banned from Twitter. A former ex-president of the United States has been banned from Twitter because he violated the rules of Twitter. Let us stop. And he said that Twitter does not have legal personality. Does the internet belong to Nigeria? Don't we use the internet in Nigeria? And, to the, and, and to the, most, the most amazing thing is that the Nigerian government has succeeded in excluding itself from the conversation. It is no longer in the conversation, but Nigerians are still talking on Twitter. What have they succeeded in doing? They have made a mess and a fool of themselves. We must, we must, we must use some perspective and treat issues as they ought to be treated. We cannot continue as a country that is seen to be repressive, a country that would want to become a regime of oppression, a country that will want to stifle free speech. This Twitter space self-regulates itself. If the presidency or anybody for that nature felt that someone like Nabi, and you also alluded that they deleted his tweets. Has Nabi Kwanu shut down Twitter? He said they should lodge a complaint because the own, does he think that America is a country that does not respect fundamental rights? This same tweet, Facebook has banned Donald Trump. Donald Trump appealed against it recently. They have still not brought him back. He had over 67 million followers. And they took him down, even though it was at a great cost to them. They took his the tweet down because he violated the rules of their community. The rules of the community of Twitter are Mr. very Mr. clear. Mr. I, I like, uh, I would like to go to Mr. Cleansing. Buala because of our time. But, but I'd like you to quickly just touch on this. If my producer can put up those countries that have equally suspended Twitter, and perhaps if any country deems fit that what they are saying in their domain is not what they like. Some of the countries include China, Iran, North Korea, Turkmenistan, and Nigeria has joined that list. Look at the five countries so that, even tell you that in we, the are case now, of we are North now, Korea. We are now Before North China, Korea, Iran. Is that the kind of people... Mr. Bola, just a moment. Let me... Just I a moment. I wanted want him to react so that you take those two reactions together. Mr. Ahilaba, please go ahead. See, Nigeria is the only country currently in Africa that has banned Twitter. Look at the pairs. You have just listed five countries. Look at it. We want to be in the same place with Iran. We want to be in the same place with China in terms of fundamental human rights. Does it even, does it even make sense to anybody that you want to stifle free speech at this point in time? Okay, let us even assume without conceding 
that we have a security situation in Nigeria. This government has not learned the art of dialogue. It has not learned that you need to engage your people. You need to use the same medium that your enemy is using or whoever is an enemy of state is using to engage people. You need to use it to dispel such rumors. I have been online for the past two, three weeks dispelling a lot of propaganda that people who would seek to destabilize Nigeria are doing. It is a hard task, and I expect people like DG of NOA, people like Daniel Buala, to assist in doing right. these things. So let me, let me try and stifle speech. The more you stifle speech, the more you get what you are getting today. Let me allow Mr. Buala to come back into the conversation. From every Nigerian. Mr. Buala, your response to some of the things he said now. First of all, it's false that Nigeria is the only country in Africa that has banned Twitter. I think it is uh, either Namibia or Zambia, one of these countries. I'll pick the name later. They, they, they suspended all social media when they were conducting election. And shortly after in 2000 and 2020, and shortly after their election, they restored all other platforms and kept Twitter aside till this very moment as we're talking. That's one. Number two, yeah, I, I'm, try, I'm struggling to find a comparison between Michel Obama raising bring, the placard of Bring Back Our Girls and the, the, uh, the protest in Lagos. There's no comparison. Bring back our guess is a request for all well-meaning Nigerians to work towards ensuring that the girls who were adopted are brought back. The protests in Lagos, the president endorsed the protests for the first one, two weeks. The only part where that they had a departure with the government was when they tabled the request and the president said, I will grant all of it. And they said, we are not leaving the street until we see the action. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find the comparison. And then thirdly, sir, with the greatest respect, he has not been able to establish law, he has not been able to establish common sense and logic or counter my facts with fact. He will only dispel the fact, but even after we finish this tonight, you as a journalist can confirm every word that I have said tonight. Countries that are bound. In South Korea, let me even tell you the intriguing one. South Korea, when North Korea was using its Twitter to propagate falsehood about South Korea, South Korea demanded from Twitter that they took down some of these posts and accounts, otherwise they were going to uh, suspend Twitter. Canada and America lauded the decision of South Korea until Twitter had to obey. The reason why in America, in the case of Donald Trump, why they could not do anything is because the First Amendment in America, all the courts in America right to the Supreme Court said that the First Amendment concerns the government. It is a protection, protective right against government, not against private owners of social media. But that if somebody's right is infringed, you can bring that to court. But even in America, it was after Donald Trump lost election that they removed him from Twitter because they knew he couldn't have any power to influence. The Democrats have taken over the Congress. If Donald Trump had won the election, with the Republicans in control of the Congress, they would have played ball because that was exactly what Mike Zuckerberg did. He complied with every bit of what was said on Twitter. So right. he Wait, 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 Mr. Bwala, we need to go now, but we have 60 seconds uh, apiece to respond to this final question. The presidency says the suspension is not personal. The statement released by the presidency reads that the temporary suspension of Twitter is not just a response to the removal of the president's post. There has been a litany of problems with the social media platform in Nigeria where misinformation and fake news spread through it and have had real-world violent consequences. All the while, the company has escaped accountability. Those are the words of the presidency. Considering issues of hate speech, Mr. Hillabo, fake news and some of the harm or damage experienced sometimes on this platform, perhaps the security dimension into this matter, however painful the Twitter suspension may be, would you say the government is proactive, security sense now, in protecting its citizens? Let me allow Mr. Hillabo to go first. Just in about 60 seconds each. So, so, there's no way anybody would tell me this government has been proactive towards providing security. 20 people were killed in a, a ganga in Barapa. 66 people were killed in Kebi. The president, on the day he made that tweet, 200 children were kidnapped in Niger State. He did not use his Twitter handle to speak to those issues. I think this is more about regime protection, regime, uh, uh, protecting the regime of of this government rather than providing security for Nigerians. We, we, we are all 
we all appreciate the security dimension of things. And to Mr. Buala that keeps making flowery excuses for this government, he'll do well to come back to Nigeria and let us all enjoy this country and not stay in the UK where he thinks he has some sense of security. He will come uh, back to Nigeria and travel from Abuja to Kaduna in his car and tell me that he has some security. Instead of allow stifling Mr. Buala's, the speech uh, of people who are complaining and telling this government that they have not done well for them. All right. Mr. Buala, it's your turn to respond to that same question. Okay. Okay, well, first of all, I live in Nigeria. I only came to the UK to spend a couple of weeks on my own money and my own sweat, not any government. So a Hilebo should hold his peace regarding that. And I'll be back in Nigeria and continue the hustle. Then secondly, as regards insecurity, we're all together complaining about insecurity in Nigeria. We want a solution to insecurity. I cannot deny that. But ask him and his um, um, uh, taxpayers, the PDP, what is the position? Have you taken your time to ask them what is their own solution that they are providing for the government? Have you been able to ask them what is their comment about the insightful comment on Twitter by some of these other individuals that want to destabilize Nigeria? Or whenever they appear in all television, they will never say anything that will contribute to stopping insecurity. They would rather be saying the government is the reason why insecurity is there. I will only advise them lastly, let them tell all their bulldogs that this country, we must fight to keep it together. I advise the president not to backslide from some decision that he has to take to preserve the life and the territorial right. integrity of Nigeria. Mr. Daniel Buala and Mr. Anthony Hilebo, lawyers, both from the different divides, APC and PDP. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time tonight. And that's how we draw the curtain on tonight's program. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm Shion Okimale. Bye-bye.